um, accounting. Chapter 14, um, section 1. Now we're going to talk about customers that can't pay their bills. Um, un uncollectible accounts receivable. Um, three learning objectives for the first section. Explain the purpose of the allowance method for recording losses from uncollectible accounts. Estimate the uncollectible accounts expense using an aging of accounts receivable and record the adjusting entry for the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Um, first of all, uh, three green uses the terms of 210. Remember, if you pay in 10 days, you can take 2% off, or net 30 when selling to customers on account. Um, they do expect customers to pay in full within 30 days. Uh, three green begins sending customers periodic reminders when their accounts are more than 30 days past due, and more serious actions may be taken if a customer account is not paid within 90 days. Three Green may stop selling on account to a customer until payment is received. And Three Green is aware that a small percentage of its customers will never pay their account in full. Um, see, with, with each sale on account, a business takes the risk that the customer will never pay the amount owed. Um, the risk is considered an expense of doing business. Um, the expense must be recorded in the same accounting period that the revenue is earned. Um, accurate financial reporting requires that expenses be recorded in the fiscal period in which the expense contributes to earning revenue. Um, so, accounts receivable that cannot be collected are called uncollectible accounts. Uh, this expense is, is recorded in uncollectible accounts expense. Um, some businesses refer to uncollectible accounts as bad debts and they use the account title bad debt expense instead of uncollectible accounts expense. Um, Basically, a business can't know the amount of money it's going to fail to collect from uncollectible accounts. The GAAP requires a business to record an estimate of its uncollectible accounts. Um, an estimating uncollectible accounts expense at the end of a fiscal period records the expense of uncollectible accounts in the same period as the related revenue. Um, crediting the estimated value of uncollectible accounts to a contra account is called the allowance method of recording losses from uncollectible accounts. The difference between an asset's account balance and its related contra account balance is called book value. Um, right there. And the difference between the balance of accounts receivable and its contra account, which is the allowance for uncollectible accounts, is called the book value of accounts receivable. The book value of accounts receivable reported on the balance sheet represents an estimate, an estimate of the total amount of accounts receivable the business expects to collect in the future. Okay, the amount of accounts receivable a business expects to collect is called the net realizable value. Okay, lots of new accounts that we're talking about today. Oh, sorry, I didn't fast forward. That's what we just talked about. We do have a few methods for estimating uncollectible accounts receivable. You can either do the percent of sales method, which assumes that a percent of credit sales will become uncollectible, or you can do the percent of accounts receivable method. It uses an analysis of accounts receivable to estimate the amount that will be uncollectible. And percents are usually pay based on past experience. Um, Let's see, the, uh, three green uses the percent of accounts receivable method. Um, so as you analyze accounts receivable according to when they are due, this is called aging. Um, aging of accounts receivable. So actually that's the first step. Um, when we're going to go through our accounts receivable, we put them into categories by age groups. Everything that's due current, due 1 to 30 days, due 31 to 60 days, etc. So these are all the age groups. And then we analyze those age groups. And that's the aging of accounts receivable. And here we see it. Um, 
all of our customers, all of their account balances, and what is currently due. Okay, so for Belk and Jensen, they currently owe this much. Um, days account balance past due. So these are past due. <coughs> Excuse me, Belk and Jensen owes this much past its due date. Um, they don't have anything more. Let's look at Edmonds Hospital. Their account balance, nothing current, but 1 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days. Um, then they add everything down the column. Oops, backwards, sorry. They add everything down the column. And these right here, so all the totals of the columns, and then the percents of what the, we are going to assume we're not going to receive. As the company, we're going to assume that we will not get 1% of the current um, account receivable. We will not receive 4% of the past due 1 to 30, 12% of this, etc. And it makes sense. If it's over 90 days due, we're probably not going to see a lot of it. So that's why the percentage increases as the due date gets older. Um, then we do some math. So take all of these totals here and plop them in the amount of the age groups. Okay, put the percentages, all of these percentages here, go right there. And then do some math. Um, I don't have my calculator up. So $11,774.01 times 0 0.01 is uncollectible. Okay, this total times 0 0.04, or 4%, is uncollectible. Keep on going, and then add all of that up. This is the amount that is most likely uncollectible. Current balance of allowance for uncollectible accounts is here. Do some subtraction, and you get your estimated addition to allowance for uncollectible accounts. Oh, we did that, and we did that, and we did that. Okay, so now let's go through how we journalize everything. Um, okay, so at the end of a fiscal period, some general ledger accounts need to be brought up to date before um, financial statements are prepared. So we have all of the T accounts. Um, our accounts receivable is $20,381. Go back and we'll show you that right here. Our accounts receivable. Uncollectible accounts is what we just um, added. So we're increasing on the debit side. Allowance for uncollectible balance. Um, this is what we subtracted out plus what we just did here and our new balance. Oops, wrong way. I'm so sorry. Okay, then we have to fill it in the general journal. Um, first of all, we make a just a title called Adjusting Entries. Make sure I get everything in here. So the Company 3 Green has estimated that $2,509.25 um, right there of its accounts receivable will become uncollectible. 3 Green needs to record an adjusting entry to bring its allowance for uncollectible accounts balance up to that number. Um, the general ledger balance for allowance for uncollectible accounts is $125 credit. So this balance is the unused allowance estimate from the prior fiscal period. So it wasn't needed to cover any, any uncollectible accounts. It's left over in their budget. When the allowance account has a previous credit balance, the amount of adjusting entry um, right here is added to the previous balance because we want the total to be the $2,509. So we adjust that. So we're going to write our date. That's the end of the fiscal period. Uncollectible accounts expense, remember it's the difference of these two numbers, sorry, 125 and 2509, so that's our adjustment. We debit it for the uncollectible accounts expense, and we credit it for the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Okay, 
What general ledger accounts are used to account for uncollectible accounts receivable? It's a contra asset account called allowance for uncollectible accounts and the expense account called uncollectible accounts expense. Explain why an adjustment for uncollectible accounts is an application of a matching expenses with revenue concept. Um, the allowance method of recording losses from uncollectible accounts attempts to match the expense of uncollectible accounts in the same fiscal year that the, re that the related sales are recorded. That's the generally accepted accounting principle. What are the two methods used to estimate uncollectible accounts receivable? Percent of sales method and then the percent of accounts receivable method. And remember, Think Green uses the percent of accounts receivable method. How is, recounts, how is accounts receivable affected by the estimate of uncollectible accounts? The account isn't affected. They have a contra account that takes, um, takes all the money into account. 